رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Dear respected viewers and listeners everywhere, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to this special session with my guests about Islamic education in Africa. Uh, I have today with me in the studio uh, Dr. Edley Omar Farah. A Vice Chancellor of Al Umma University uh, in Kenya and uh, Mombasa. Kajiado, Kenya. Kajiado, it's uh, one of the suburbs of uh, in Kenya. Uh, Kenya. Uh, and also with me here, uh, Dr. Uh, Halima Wakabi Akbar, Academic Registrar in Islamic University in Uganda. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers. Hayakumullah. And also, Dr. Tajuddin, our brother, he is uh, from International University of Africa. Thank you very much, and I just want to, to dear viewers, thank you. Uh, welcome all to this uh, symposium, and we are going to discuss the education and the history of education and your uh, current. Uh, situation in your countries and your institutions, in addition to what is the view and uh, your vision in the future. Let's start about how uh, Islamic education started, and uh, let's say in Kenya, and how this idea evolved till you reached the uh, uh, establishment of the Umma University. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much once again. And I wish to thank the International University of Africa for giving us this opportunity and to welcome us here and to attend several meetings and to the Department of Mass Communication for allowing us this particular uh, session. Uh, education, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's, it's a very important, it's, it's the life, it is what contributes to the social economic development of any society. Yes. Uh, in the world, not just uh, Africa. And therefore, the importance of education cannot be really overemphasized. Islamic education in particular in the East Africa region has a very long history, yet uh, it has been marginalized and has not uh, developed properly over this period of time. Uh, in the islands of Lamu and the coastal regions of uh, East Africa, 700, 800 years ago, uh, there were Islamic and Quranic schools. Uh, during the British colonial period, the 10-mile coastal strip of East Africa and the northern Kenya had specific agreements with the British uh, colonialists at that time to be able to conduct Islamic education in these areas. But they were not allowed to do the rest of the other education in terms of secular education in terms of history, in terms of geography, in terms of technology, oh, and so on. So they were allowed to do the Quranic schools, they were allowed to do uh, religious studies uh, in the masjids and in the madrasas. 100 so years ago? Uh, over 700 years ago. Oh. Uh, that, that's when uh, Islam came to the coast of East <coughs> Africa. Uh, there are masjids in, uh, in, in the coast of uh, Kenya that still have the two, oh, the two goodness. So the history of Islamic education is really, really uh, quite old in, in this uh, region. Uh, when it came to independence in 1963, about 60 years ago, uh, obviously the new independent government, the African government that was in place, needed to start a harmonized education system mm. in the country. But they were all based on missionaries and Christian uh, based uh, schools at that point in time. And the most of the Muslims, who were still a minority in the country, 
were reluctant to send their children to these schools. Oh, I see. And, and therefore, they went to Quranic schools, they went to masjids, and this is where they were learning uh, religious education, uh, Arabic, and, and, and so on. Uh, for those who are brave enough then, they took their children to the English schools, mm. uh, and, and they had to go through the British system of education. And from that point in time, the, uh, the Muslim communities decided that they were going to do two ways of doing Islamic education. They developed fully-fledged madrasas where the uh, mode of communication and teaching was in Arabic. Ah. So they would do geography, they would do history, they would do uh, physics, chemistry, and so on. But the mode of language was purely Arabic, and they developed a thanawi system of education and examination. The second system that developed was that the ones who wanted to do the British system of education and the Kenyan system of education developed what is called an integrated schools. Oh, good. Yeah. The integrated schools then had English as their mode of teaching, but they taught everything else that was taught in the madrasa, mm. but they also taught everything else that was taught in the Kenyan system. Mm, okay. And these children were literally overburdened because they had to do subjects of madrasa in the evenings from five o'clock up to late night. And then during the day, they learned with the rest of the uh, Kenyan uh, mm. education system. And over 60 years now, we realized the need that after this, students needed to go to university. And this is where we are currently. Mm. And the first uh, chartered university, Islamic university, was only came in 2019, October. And this is Umar University that I currently represent. Uh, let's uh, postpone this until you, we talk about the current situation. Let's talk okay. about the history. Thank you very much. That would be good. Yeah. That's a good you. idea. And I think uh, it's a good, expe uh, good experience about uh, focusing on integrated education. And let's talk later about uh, the uh, advantages and disadvantages of, of this experience on students and the educational system. And we move to Dr. Halima yeah. in Uganda about uh, give us a pr brief idea about how Islamic education started in your country in Uganda. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, if you look at the history of uh, Muslim education, particularly in Uganda, you will find that uh, in Uganda we had what we call kingdoms. Oh. And mostly what was practiced at you know, during the, the era of the kingdoms was mostly traditional religion uh, <coughs> as such. And uh, it is interesting, uh, my brother has pointed out that uh, Islam came with the um, trade, the oh. slave trade that was going on in the East African uh, region at that time. So this is how Islam penetrated into the interior of okay, would Uganda. Would you give dates, specific dates or history? That was in the 1900s. I, I think mm. I can trace that back if I recall uh, quite c clearly, maybe 1930, 1920s. Oh. Oh. And what is interesting is that um, 10 years later, that's when the missionaries entered Uganda. Oh. So actually, if you look at the uh, history uh, of also Islam... Can you give a date also? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least. Well, I, I think uh, that was in the 1950s. You know? 1950s? Yeah. Oh. Well, let's say 1895, 1895 when that's when the petition of, uh, of the East Africa region was actually undertaken. Actually, uh, yeah. that's, that's when the, the colonialists divided Africa into the various... 1895 is actually the date for colonialism Colon to, oh start. to start. And so Christianity came with this came period of time. Nearly that after time. that, after the missionaries came? So after the missionaries uh, came, actually the whole education system was taken over. Uh, because, you see, um, the traders, they practiced the religion, but they were, were not um, organized in the way that, you know, they spread the religion like the missionaries. You see, the missionaries came with a mission, mm. and their mission was very clear. So when they came in, um, the whole education system in Uganda was 
set up under the, uh, the, mm. the system, the British uh, system. And uh, the British left mostly the education to the missionaries. So that laid down the foundation, first of all, of education in Uganda. Now, of course, the Muslims wanted to pursue education. But when they sent their children into the schools, and there's a very historical figure attached to that, mm. Lule uh, Yusuf, who was one time the president of uh, Uganda, he was one of the Muslims who attended the missionary schools and he converted oh. to, uh, to Christianity. So this struck fear in the hearts of many of the parents and they withdrew their children from, most of them withdrew their children from the secular uh, education that was available at that time. So for a very long time, the Muslims uh, were very far behind in education. And that's why you find in the 1967, when we gained independence, there were only two Muslim graduates at that time. Mm. Okay, and I think that, yes, and therefore it, it has very strong implications, which maybe we can look at later, but it meant that the Muslims were not able to participate in the economic, you know, and uh, political uh, arena, because uh, you need that. Education helps you to propel you to be able sure. to, 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 sure. to do that. So, um, when the... One of the Prince Badru Kakunglu, also um, a Muslim mm -hmm. who was in the uh, kingdom of Buganda, realized the need for doing something about the education of the Muslims there. So they formed what we call the Uganda uh, Umea, Uganda Muslim Education <coughs> Association. So with the Muslim, uh, as Uganda Muslim Education Association, they started um, schools of their own, mm. Muslim schools. And in these Muslim schools, uh, you find both the integrated uh, curriculum, the secular, what we call secular, mm. and then the Muslim uh, education education is integrated in that. So you find that these are how the primary and secondary school mostly started as a, an association of the Muslims in order to see how to better the education of the Muslim. But we also have to remember we had the madrasas, mm. you know, uh, not, not formal schools, but on the verandas of mu'alims who used to take you know, the, the students through the Quranic recitations and, and, and so on, and, and memorization. Okay. So that was also going on alongside. Well, for a very long time, um, this is what went on. I, I want to point out that if you look at high education, why am I mentioning the high education? Because um, we know uh, that higher education is one of the determinants of uh, uh, being able to propel people to participate in both social economic uh, development of their countries. And for a very long time, Uganda had only one university, which was the National University, Makere University. And the per percentage of Muslims that could enter into higher education was less than 1%. Uh, during that time. And uh, therefore, with the opening up of the higher education for the Muslims in form of the Islamic University in Uganda. Islamic University in Uganda is a university that was set up under the OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Okay. And when they sat in 1974 in Lahore, they realized that unless we do something about the education of Muslims, especially universities and higher education, our children, our people, our community will not be able to participate fully and, and you know, effectively 
Sure. You know. So that is when the Islamic University in Uganda was, was uh, set up uh, in 1988, and it opened its doors to 80 students at that time. Mashallah. And uh, during, uh, before, be before the Islamic University started training Muslims, um, uh, but I, I want to add that, of course, we train for everyone. Uh, the university admits both Muslims and non-Muslims, okay. although the focus is to try and, and also provide opportunities and access to Muslims. Because uh, they were deprived long Because time. they have been long deprived uh, of uh, education for a long time and they have not been participating effectively, especially in political and economic uh, uh, mm. uh, social development. So at that time, you f you, uh, we even couldn't find teachers to mm. teach Islam. Ah. You had Christians teaching Islam in Islam the schools. In the oh, and this was cutting across the region, Tanzania, oh. Kenya, Uganda, okay. you know, the whole region. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this was meant to address some of those uh, issues. Okay, that's a good idea. And mm. that you, you, you Jazakallah khair for this uh, uh, brief idea, which is fully, and Dr. also Adli. Uh, we'll come to the second sector, which is the current s the situation and your education in your countries. But if Dr. Taj Tajuddin, you have any comment on that? I want to thank you, the viewers, and I want to thank you, Dr. Tamami, for giving us this opportunity. I want to say Islamic is one of the three main religions in the world, Islam, Christian, and Jewish. And the history of Islam in Africa is, is a long time ago. It was uh, as long as 1,500 years back. Uh, the fairest components of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they have been persecuted, uh, they were uh, Prophet Muhammad allowed them to move, and they moved to Habasha, which is uh, Habasha means the whole area. So that was a long time ago. So the history of Islam is deeply rooted, and uh, it has been cut some time, but this is how it started. We are talking of 1,500 years ago, and it was established a full, not all in. Uh, not only reciting Quran or the Hadith, but it was a full integrated uh, schools. But for a lot of reasons, uh, especially as been mentioned by uh, Professor Idli, it was in 1980s when uh, the European countries sat in, uh, in Berlin and divided Africa, uh, serving their own interests actually, and putting in mind the missionaries so that they could be able to spread and to replace actually the Christianity in the, in the place of Islam. That was the beginning. So they put a lot of boundaries and a lot of uh, uh, conditions, which will prevent it, actually would give a wrong concept to the Muslims, that if you go to the Islamic country schools, uh, they discourage not to, to go to, to Islamic schools. And actually, not only that, they given the idea that uh, Islam is tied, uh, that you don't, uh, you don't have a better opportunity in medicine or engineering, or going to Islamic school means just to be a teacher. And as said by uh, Dr. Halima, uh, because I've been in Uganda and Kenya, she's talking of uh, 100 years back. You know, I say in 1940s and 1930s, after 1,400. So it is a cut of generations. That's why the International University of Africa, which established in 1960s, uh, one of the main uh, targets and objectives of the university is uh, to receive students from Africa and to train them and give them all the capabilities and all the information and all the different type of education, so will enable them to go to their country and contribute positively in the development. Uh, the International University hosting now over uh, uh, 53 African states have their students here in this university. And uh, that's why we expanded, not only Islamic University, but also Faculty of Education, uh, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Dentistry, different faculties. And we do believe uh, future, Islam has a very bright future in Africa, but also we need to double our efforts work hard so that to achieve the respective objectives, of not only of spreading, but also to make it a reasonable uh, ed uh, uh, education that could be uh, tied to the community, settling the, the problems of the community. And we are very optimistic that things will go in this trend, inshallah. Jazakallah, Dr. you I think you passed all the three uh, areas, <laughs> areas <laughs> past and current and future. Uh, let's go to the second uh, part, which is the current situation and the current situation and uh, the challenges that are facing uh, your institutions 
and the Muslims for Islamification, Dr. Rizvi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the challenges, no doubt, are many, and, and they, they, they are numerous and they are quite far reaching. Uh, but one of the key things that we have to solve uh, for the East Africa region yeah. and African region in total is this false barrier between secular education ah. and Islamic education. Because in Islam, I don't know it's one, it's a way of life, it's a complete way of life. Yeah. So this idea that we're saying we're going to go for education oh. that is secular, vis-a-vis -vis education that is Islamic, is really a false uh, contradiction. Contradiction, yes. Dialogue. And therefore the mainstreaming of ensuring that we have institutions with the Islamic philosophy that teach all subjects is, is really the key way to go forward. So that uh, in the world we know that we, we have international accreditation bodies, we have national accreditation bodies, uh, whether it is curriculum, whether it is examination, whether it is that we have an Islamic driven uh, education that is acceptable and accreditable to all these institutions. Good. This is the biggest challenge and I think once we overcome this, we should be able to uh, move forward and, and bring the Muslim populations in this region at par with everybody else, if not surpass, because the Muslim is supposed to be the most innovative, the most uh, uh, person who loves education and creating new solutions to problems. Uh, uh, actually, it's our religion who encourages them. Mm -hmm. In the Holy Quran and the Hadith yeah. of the Nabi Muhammad yeah. Sallam, yeah. there are many ayat, verses, and hadith that would encourage us to uh, study, to explore, to see the signs of Allah mm -hmm. everywhere, and signs and everywhere. And I like the idea that you said it's a way of life. The concept of uh, worship in Islam is very wide, very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And if to uh, take and accommodate all parts of life and the individual, it's not just uh, separate or secular one or separating religion from science or from our life. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Uh, the the uh, number of students now, is it growing in your university? At the university right now, as I said, uh, we have two uh, actually universities currently, but Uma University is the one that has gotten the final accreditation, Mashallah. which is the charter. We have Raf International University that is still operating on a provisional license called the Letter of Interim Authority. Mm. We have other universities that are not registered, but they are in collaboration with universities outside. Uh, the country like International University of mm. Africa and so on. Uh, so we have maybe three or four others that are not registered, but they do give degrees from foreign universities. Good, good. So the what long about term... The, what about the society? Are for you open to accept... Uh, for Oma University, not being a Kenyan registered uh, entity, uh, it's open to everybody, Mashallah. whatever, as long as you observe the Islamic principles, and uh, everything revolves around Islamic way of life. Courses in, in the evening? Uh, courses, uh, uh, the common courses that you have to Vocational take. Vocational courses or uh, something? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, the dress code, the prayer times, everything must be observed as Good. for the Islamic way of life. And by the time, uh, by, by the way, I think uh, all un three universities mm -hmm. are part of the uh, uh, Islamic Union for Islamic, Islamic universities, uh, association, association Africa. Yes. for mm -hmm. Africa. And this is good to start to help and support some of the universities. And as a matter of fact, I visited Umma University, mashallah. I, I loved it, it. The structure, the architecture, the infrastructure of the university. And mashallah, I invite uh, others to come, to come and to pursue their studies and study there Jazakallah and to khair. visit them. Thank you. Mashallah, Thank you. And you are astonished to see such uh, good university and uh, sh such calibers in the heart of Africa. And uh, inshallah, we are coming to Dr. <laughs> Halima. <laughs> I hope to visit the university mm -hmm. one day, inshallah, oh, and inshallah to see the different welcome. campuses. Yes. I heard a lot about it, Jani. Okay. But thank you, Dr. Uh, Ezli. We'll yeah. come uh, to you, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I'm the current status of the Muslim education, mashallah. 
we have seen, especially in the field of uh, education, both right from the primary to education uh, level, tremendous uh, efforts and uh, achievements. Mashallah. Many of the university uh, students that graduated from the faculty of education, they went and served in the under the education commission that's yes. uh, employed by government. Great, mashallah. They set up very many schools right now. We have many of our students who have set up schools. To and this is good. This is yeah. one of the fruits yeah. of the fruits that uh, we graduate yes. some students and push them to and the university. Them. And, and you can see that uh, it has made that effect. They have tried to coin the education along the philosophical approach of Mashallah. Islam and, and education. That means trying to integrate, yeah, uh, you know, both the, uh, you know, like he says, it, it's very difficult because that's the terminology that's being used. But if you look at it critically, we don't have secular education and we don't have Muslim education. We have education mm. as Muslims. It's, yeah. it's education. All yeah. knowledge is, is, is from Allah. And we have been encouraged to pursue, you know, knowledge in that you know, whole perspective. And that really should be the philosophical foundation Good. of our mm. Muslim education, right from primary to secondary to university, if we have to make a difference. And this is very we good. Yeah. Let's move to the, because you know, the director is waving. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, touch upon your vision and perspective and the future of your education uh, and your countries. And just for one minute and a half and... <laughs> uh, for us, the idea is to create a, a world-class uh, higher education system, universities Good. that are Islamic-based, uh, Muslim-based, uh, both at uh, the university level, at the secondary level, and at the lower primary levels. Good. To give an opportunity to our children to be able to work anywhere in the world, because we are training for the world. We are not training just for Kenya. Good. Good. Yeah. Inshallah, this is really the key thing. And just to thank the International University of Africa because most of the people who are now running the universities in East Africa are actually alumni of this university, Mashallah. the ones who have started the universities. This is really a special thank to uh, International University of Africa and a special thank to the government of Sudan because you are contributing a great job uh, for Africa, serving the communities, serving the people of Africa, the nations of Africa. Wherever I go in Africa, I find uh, many graduates of this blessed university in different fields, in medicine, pharmacology, in engineering, and uh, uh, science. Uh, mashallah, this is good uh, uh, in uh, Islamic education, education in general. Uh, this really we, this is a credit for the university, Jazakumullah khair. Dr. Halima here, the Yeah, next time I have to make sure that I speak first so that I can take. <laughs> okay, <good>. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, that was a joke. Well, I, I think I have to use my time to talk a little bit about uh, gender ah. and uh, Muslim education. I think that we also need to focus. For a very, very long time, there has been a stereotype that uh, yeah. uh, Muslim women are not supposed to be educated, left they're back not, they're, they're left back, and the hijab is a way of holding the women back and no access to education and so on. But we have seen that change slowly. Uh, it is still an issue that we need to address. Alhamdulillah, we at the university have tried, at the Islamic University, have tried to see that we open up more access to for Muslim uh, young girls uh, to I enter. I guess that you have a special campus. We have a special campus uh, for the girls. for the students. When we took girls in for girls, yeah, yeah for the uh, for the young so girls, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, when the university opened up in 1988. We had 80 students Mashallah. coming in, in two faculties, education ah. and faculty of Islamic and Arabic uh, ah. language. Ah. So what actually happened, 13 of them were girls, 
<laughs> and I was <laughs> one of them. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. good. So this is just our team. But I'm happy that in the last graduation, we were uh, graduating 1999. 50. Nine, 19, uh, 2019. Uh, 19. Oh. We graduated 50%. We graduated 2016 uh, students, and 50% of them were okay. females. So in our universities, we need to emphasize the role of the Muslim women in education and also in participating in their socioeconomic you know, uh, development of their and community. You have a good future. Yes, because if we leave them behind, we are leaving a big section of our ummah, and we need to do something about it. And at the university, we are now admitting from 23. Right now, we have from 23 different countries. Uh, student population coming from 23 different countries, uh, about Excuse 10, me, thousand. after graduating, do you have alumni or some uh, statistics that you follow up your students? Where are they going? Different fields in the university, in the government? Do I you have such things in both universities? I think that uh, this is one of the things that we must also do. We know we have interacted with our students right from ministers, members of parliament Mashallah. now, judges in the government uh, courts and everything, w you know, because we have six faculties and 72, 72 programs now. So quite a number, uh, diverse number of, of, uh, of programs. But I think what you're saying is, is, uh, is yes, we must follow up and see where they are and what they're doing and how they can contribute also. Good. You have the same thing? We have already registered our mm -hmm. alumni association. Good, mashallah. Mm -hmm. And now they have officials, they have elections, and mm -hmm. they are following up on mm -hmm. our graduates and mashallah. where they're going. Good, mm -hmm. good. It's good to have these such uh, statistics. Yeah. Yeah. Zakum it was a good discussion. Thank you. We have just uh, uh, 50, minute, 50 seconds. Okay, I, I just <laughs> want to thank very much, actually, the component of this uh, the Association of Islamic University in Africa, which mm. is the executive body meeting, is not only this Kenya and Uganda and international Africa, but also include Ivory Coast, uh, Comora Island, Mauritania, the Chad, and other countries. And uh, we all actually, th th my message is to promote tolerance and friendship among the different communities and live peacefully uh, and have a prosperous Africa, inshallah. Mm. Good. I think in, in Islam, we need to promote tolerance. Yes. Islam in itself is it's tolerance. tolerates others. Yeah. 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 Yani, um, the, uh, we are open for all. Absolutely. Yeah, here Ac actually, we, uh, and we I hear uh, yes. uh, some uh, officials in your country, they were astonished, and they were asking, why don't you accept Christians? He, he, he heard some rumors. Mm -hmm. He came to the idea that uh, we are having a good portion of uh, non-Muslim yeah. students mm -hmm. in our yeah. Islamic yeah. university. Yes, and, and in, in Uganda, right from the first batch. Good, good, mashallah. They have been, uh, and we have both lecturers and students, uh, both uh, Muslim and non-Muslim. And anyway, mashallah, yeah, yeah. they're living quite well together. And uh, I think that uh, the problem is maybe just uh, conceptualization, but this can happen. There's always it tolerance, solved, it can be solved, and we can live in harmony together. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah feekum. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, support you and help you and assist you and to give you a bright future and universities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable you to Amen. do a great job and role in your communities. Uh, Islamic education is very important. Uh, what you are doing is a very crucial and important uh, role uh, doing in uplifting the community and helping the people, helping the people that cannot afford uh, that education. And this is a good uh, sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and uh, give you a bright mm -hmm. future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us uh, live to see the good fruits mm -hmm. and uh, your future results and good consequences of your uh, graduates and universities. Yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you all. And the, uh, we take this uh, opportunity to thank the University of uh, Africa for uh, hosting us here and for hosting the visitors. And I guess uh, I, there is also another symposium in Arabic. Mm -hmm. uh, some guests from uh, Ivory Coast and from Mauritania. 
and from uh, Comoros in discussing education and this is giving us a good hope about the future of education in our beloved continent Africa. Jazakum Allah Khair, our uh, uh, guest, Dr. Edli Omar. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Omar Farah. Yes, shukran. Yeah, from uh, an Ummah University in Kenya and Dr. Halima Akbar from Islamic University of Uganda and Dr. Tajuddin from uh, International University of Africa. This is Abdurrahman Tamami from the uh, I love the University of Africa. Yes. <laughs> I very much consider myself you. part of this. We cannot, uh, we cannot underestimate their, their contribution. Thank you very we much. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. the yeah. government yeah. and, and uh, your university. Uh, thank Shukran. you very much yani, for attending. Jazakumullah khair for thank that. Barakallah feekum. Barakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. khair. Bye. 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 Bye.